As I was saying, Joel Fitzgibbon, uh, former frontbencher, now backbencher, who argues Labor's, uh, Labor needs to reconnect more with its blue-collar roots, uh, is quite happy that Mark Butler, your fellow South Australian, has been removed from the climate change portfolio. Mark Butler was uh, very ambitious when it claim, came to climate change targets. Joel Fitzgibbon says his removal sends a good message to Labor's base. Does it? Look, as you said in your opening, you know, Joel's a backbencher, just like Barnaby Joyce, and just like Barnaby Joyce, he engages in a bit of commentary. That's up to him. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to respond to all of his commentary. The, the, the facts are uh, Labor's got a very clear position on climate. It's a position that aligns with that of uh, the newly elected uh, uh, President Biden of uh, net zero emissions by 2050. Uh, I think that what we have is a reshuffle uh, which is all about Australian jobs. Uh, it has Australian jobs front and centre, recognises what the pandemic has demonstrated, that we have too much insecure work, we have too many people unemployed or who need more work. Uh, and this is a reshuffle that is very much focused on the issues that matter to Australians. OK, but uh, I, I know you say he's a, he's a backbencher, but he makes a very good point that there were big swings against the Labor Party in areas uh, where he lives, like the Hunter Valley in New South Wales. Do you run the risk in, in doing what you've done uh, with the climate change, change of personnel, or perhaps winning some votes back in those areas, but exposing yourself to, to losing well, votes from the, from the Greens and the independents in metropolitan seats? There has been no shift in our climate policy uh, and what, what you have is a person going into the climate portfolio who is committed to action, who recognises the economic challenge that is climate and, and recognises, this is obviously Chris Bowen, who mm. recognises that the future security of the Australian economy, future security of work does demand uh, that we responsibly respond uh, to climate. Now, you know, people can throw forward all they like. The facts are our policy is the same as it was last week. Uh, and as Anthony Albanese said, there's zero possibility of a party he leads uh, not having uh, a very clear and ambitious plan on climate. OK, and, uh, and on that front, talking about ambitious plans, will Labor take to the next election medium-term targets uh, for well, 2030 or 2035? We have made clear our 2050 target mm. and we will make our position clear on the pathway to that uh, prior to the next election. And will that but involve targets in 2030 well, or 2035? I've, I've given you, well, I've given you my answer. We'll make our position on that clear. But I would say this to you, Michael, and to the many people who watch and listen to this program, if you want action on climate, you need to elect a Labor government. Uh, I have been, I was Australia's first climate minister. I have watched for over a decade the way in which Mr Morrison and those he runs with uh, prevent action on climate, prevent this country moving forward, prevent this country moving forward when it comes to climate. Uh, and so we can have a whole heap of discussion about whether the, you know, about the Labor Party's position, uh, the commentary that you've referred to, uh, the Greens can have their own debate in the, the seats that they care about. But ultimately, if you want to change the country's course on this, and I, I do, and I have, you know, I'm very committed to action on climate, you have to change the government. OK, now, uh, this uh, has been aimed uh, by Anthony Albanese of, uh, as, as he would argue, putting uh, Labor's best foot forward, but it comes amid mm. uh, chatter about leadership. We have the likes of Bill Shorten arguing against what he describes as a tiny policy agenda for the next election. Tanya Plibersek, some would argue, openly campaigning for the leadership with front pages in The Australian. She signed up to regular talk back on 2GB. Penny Wong, going back to your previous portfolio in government, you've lived th through this movie in, in the Rudd Gillard years. This sort of stuff never ends well for the leader, does it? Well, I have lived through division and I know that way ensures that we do not have... Not only do we not have electoral success, but the people we represent, the ideas we uh, give voice to, uh, are, are not, don't succeed in a world where there is, uh, uh, you know, not unity. Well, I would, I would t say this to you, though. Anthony will lead us to the next election and beyond. 
Uh, and I know there's a lot of chatter, I know there's a lot of commentary. Uh, we, we, we had six years um, with Bill and Tanya. Uh, regrettably, we lost both elections. Uh, we are now looking to the next election. Uh, and this reshuffle is all about that. It is about Australian jobs. Uh, and it is also about making sure uh, that we demonstrate to the Australian people that we recognise uh, the challenges they face uh, the importance of making sure that we don't leave anyone behind and don't, don't hold anyone back when it comes uh, to the future of this nation. And finally, we're just getting some breaking news. It goes to your portfolio, shadow portfolio. Uh, uh, there's a fresh flight ban we're learning on direct passenger flights from Dubai and Abu Dhabi uh, to places like Australia, effective from tomorrow at 1 o'clock. We're showing our viewers the tweet from the Australian High Commission in London now. Penny Wong, the Australian government, is working with Emirates and Etihad Airlines to understand the impact on outbound travel from the UK. But on face value, this is far from good news for the Australians stranded in the UK, wanting to get home, is it? We, we have nearly 40,000 Australians stranded overseas. We have a Prime Minister who told people that he would get them home by Christmas last year. He did not do so. Uh, we have a, a government at, led by Mr Morrison which has refused to step up to ensure a safe national quarantine system. And until he does that, we will continue to see these sorts of events which prevent Australian citizens from coming home. Some people are in dire circumstances. Mr Morrison should do the right thing. He should step up and take responsibility instead of doing what he so often does, which is when the going gets tough, he goes missing. Penny Wong in Adelaide, uh, thank you so much and apologies for the technical gremlins at the start there. No, no worries. Good to be with you.